Good morning, everyone. Uh, great to be here for my third uh, Deutsche Gold Messe in, in a row. And uh, start with a little story that uh, has been retold to me about 10 times since I got here. So it was uh, last June. I'm uh, enjoying a beautiful sleep after flying in from Vancouver. And uh, uh, I hear a message coming in my phone. I'm sleeping in my bed and I look at my phone and it's uh, Kai Hoffman saying, you're up on stage in five minutes. And so I uh, quickly get dressed, pants on backwards and shirts inside out and I run down and uh, I was one minute late but I still gave my talk. So thank you to all my friends who have re continuously remind me not to sleep in. And uh, so I didn't this morning. So uh, a little bit about uh, uh, Black Wolf and why you should be taking a look at it. And there's going to be a couple real key reasons which uh, pertain to our uh, most exciting gold property. But first of all, our value is underpinned by, you know, it's a similar type of deposit to what Steve has been discussing down in Tasmania. We have a 6 million ton polymetallic volcanogenic massive sulfide uh, deposit uh, with a lot of copper and gold. We have a vision to development that's called Niblack for that, that project uh, by working with other companies on a potential hub and spoke mill scenario. Five juniors all working together to potentially share infrastructure costs for a mill and tailings facility. We have good share structure with 80 million shares outstanding. We have a very good shareholder registry for both institutional and high net, work, uh, net worth uh, investors. We last month closed a financing uh, led by mining entrepreneur Frank Justra, who's uh, uh, my partner in Black Wolf and some other ventures. But the main reason why you should be looking at Black Wolf is a drill target that we're finally going to test in about a month. It is, I, I'm a third generation miner from British Columbia in Canada from the famous Golden Triangle. And this is the best drill target I've ever seen in my career. And we're gonna be putting the initial holes into it shortly. The Golden Triangle has been one of the hottest places on the planet for almost 30 years. Back in the 1980s, I was in school and a famous promoter named Murray Pezum uh, uh, led a company called Prime Resources that discovered the SK Creek deposit. And it caused great excitement in my hometown of Stewart, uh, investors all across Canada and around the world. They discovered one of the richest mines on the planet, probably the richest mine in the modern era. But subsequent to that, uh, both some of my family companies uh, made discoveries like, um, uh, in fact, they're one of the, the richest mines in the biggest mine in the Golden Triangle. It's called Bruce Jack. That's named after my family, Jack McLeod, who was my grandfather, and uh, my cousin Bruce, who just sold his Sabina resources. That used to be my uncle's property. So discoveries are continuously being made. Our Black Wolf, or our Cantu property really reminds me, many, many of you might remember GT Gold. My friend Charlie Gregg got me into that stock where it was a beautiful looking surface anomaly before any drill holes were put into it. And back in 2017, it was my biggest win, and it was also, or actually 2016, and the following year, 2017, when they discovered another deposit called Cattle, Sa Saddle South, um, uh, that was a big win as well. And even companies like Goliath Resources uh, that made a dis discovery a couple of years ago, our Cantu deposit is very similar. So regardless if you're a shareholder or not, please have Black Wolf on your screen in June and July when we are drilling this prospect. Why is it so good? Well, it's a 30 meter wide vein and it's a series of veins, but the key one is 30 meters wide and it averages one ounce per ton gold. These are unicorn, like I, I've been wor working in this business for 30 years. It's very rare to see these type of deposits that have never had a drill hole in it. And the remarkable thing, it is right next to a mine that is currently in development by Ascot Resources. 
I wanted to drill this last summer. We didn't get our permits until the fall. Uh, so this is going to be a very transformative year for the company. It is a, just a beautiful drill target. So it'll be most of my talk today. Uh, so in terms of share structure, we have 80 million shares outstanding, uh, 108 fully diluted. We've got a very good institutional shareholder registry. The, the largest uh, uh, gold fund in, out of Vancouver is called Delbrook Capital. Uh, they're a big shareholder. Uh, Crestcat, who um, uh, are involved in lots of discovery stage companies, are, are shareholders. Uh, my partner, Frank Joustra, Commodity Discovery is another shareholder. Um, I own uh, 2.3 million shares myself. And uh, we've got a very good team of board uh, uh, directors and management. Here's the location. Our projects are mostly in Alaska. We do have one in Canada. We are also looking at some additional acquisitions. The Hyder Properties includes the Cantu Prospect. Niblack is our uh, polymetallic uh, VMS deposit. And Kitzolt is where we're looking at our hub-and-spoke mill. How did we get into this area? Well, it, there's, please go to our website and read a remarkable story, especially if you love you know, stories and prospectors and discoveries. There's a, a tale of in the 1920s, these prospectors found these, the, these, these rocks next to a glacier with seams of electrum, which is a gold and silver alloy that ran 22,000 grams per ton gold coming out from under the ice. They tunneled through the ice to look for the source of this, and, they, and 10 years later, they eventually found a vein that they recovered 330 ounces out of 200 kilos of rock. So this is what got us into the area, and it's still a very good prospect called Solo. Um, and of course, the ice is long melted, and it would, probably it'll be next year that we'll drill it. But when we got into the area, an old timer gave me a map that pointed to our Cantu property and talked about this 30 meter wide vein. When I first saw this map, I thought it was bullshit. Like I had uh, worked my whole career, I knew this mountain, and I thought there was nothing there. Talked about two cableways that went up to some old tunnels. I, was, I didn't believe that either. We flew over in a helicopter, and I'll show you a photo outcropping in a cliff. There's this vein that's twice the height of the ceiling, more than that. I couldn't believe it. And I said, we're going to drill that. And finally, this June is when we're going to get out, out there. So where is it? Most of the gold, there's 60 companies that are working in the Golden Triangle, all on the British Columbia, Canada side of the border. We're the only side a company operating on the Alaska side. And geology doesn't follow international boundaries. We're adjacent to a mine in development. Other companies, they're not here this year, but like Scotty Resources is just to the north. My last company was called IDM Mining, and we sold the Red Mountain uh, project uh, to Ascot Resources. Um, we also have lots of other great targets, but I really want to focus on Cantu. It is within a couple of hundred meters of the international boundary. There's a lot of alluvial gold. This is something that us geologists look for, is if you have gold in the rivers, that often means that there's a bedrock source. And our main target is a series of showings and prospects that extend for five kilometers that have never seen a drill hole. You see where it says Premier and Silver Coin in Big Missouri? Those are the mines that are currently in development. You cross the border into Alaska, is very part, likely part of the same geological system as that famous premier mine. By the way, produced two and a half million ounces of gold, and there's a current resource of five million ounces. Very part, likely part of the same system. In fact, we could be at the roots of it, uh, at, um, uh, which might be explained by some of the high grades. So here's this, this now famous cliff where there's a series of these veins. I didn't go and look at these because it's way too steep. We sent some. Uh, hippie uh, rock climbers from California down on ropes to sample it. And uh, you can see some of the values. That wide vein consistently runs around an ounce per ton. And uh, the other veins also have some very high grade silver, up to thousands of grams per ton, as well as some copper and other important metals in it. So what are we going to do? We're going to sit up above the cliffs, uh, a couple of sites that we selected, and we're going to drill all the way down to the valley floor. 
I'll show you a cross section in a second. So this is what some of the veins look like, you know, for non-geologists or it's even hard to see, but all that rust is sulfides with a lot of quartz and um, is, uh, again, a really substantial looking shallow dipping drill target. So this is how we've modeled it. It's likely uh, dipping into the mountain. We'll sit up at the top. And uh, we've contracted a local assay lab, so we'll be drilling in a month. We expect to have our assays by July. So it should be a real quick turnaround. Okay, I'm gonna switch gears and talk about actually what is our main project, our main resource. So this is something that we believe we're being very innovative. Most junior companies don't work together, but there's five of us that are. I'm on the board of directors for Dolly Varden Silver and work closely with, uh, with their management team. We all share an office together with Frank Joustra. We are working with them, Goliath Resources, New Molly, which is a private company, uh, and uh, Coast Copper. And we're looking at jointly studying a mill at a permitted site located on tidewater with the lowest hydroelectric costs in the world. This would de-risk these projects because it's already permitted and we would be able to have the economies of scale where we would share capital costs and have the benefit of reduced operating costs. Expect news throughout the summer now that we have a path to doing an economic study on our Niblack project, same with our partner companies. And what are we studying? Niblack is located on the ocean. It is a volcanogenic massive sulfide or black smoker style deposit um, there's a series of different zones and prospects that are all wide open for expansion and I know most you know, companies will be saying the same thing. This truly is. There's a series of these different zones where it needs a lot of drilling. Now we have a you know, 25 to 30 million dollar market cap. This project needs probably 25 to 30 million dollars worth of drilling to really get it up to the size where it's, it, it, it is going to be of a, a interest to majors. And we're not going to do that until we have a higher market capitalization and we can raise the money at better terms. We just updated our resource. Almost all of the resources are in the indicated category and we took a conservative approach. So it's 5.8 million tons of uh, uh, close to two grams per ton gold and a percent copper, 2% zinc and about an ounce silver. But very sensitive to metal prices or costs. So uh, there, it could be as much as 10 million tons at a $50 uh, NSR, so that's the total value of, uh, uh, of the resource, uh, but we decided to use the 100. Lots of great drill intercepts. I'll just go, go through these slides. I've presented them uh, uh, th this before at this show, and you can go to our website to hear lots about this uh, excellent target. But um, really, in summary, watch drilling at Cantu. These, if you're an, either an investor or certainly if you work in this business, um, being parts of discovery uh, of a discovery is uh, is the real reason why we're all in these stocks. So that's my presentation. Time. Thank you. Um, maybe uh, two things. Um, we will have drilling news in. So we, we expect to, it's a late spring, there's still two meters of snow on the ground and it's early May. Yeah. That's one part I won't sugarcoat for this area, you get lots of snow. So we'll drill in June, but there's a new assay lab that is located nearby. They said they'll be able to give us assays in two weeks after we submit them. So expect drill results in July. Great, okay, are there any questions? Thank you very much. Okay. Rob is around here, so he's waiting for one to ones. Yep. Uh, yeah, come and see me afterwards if any of you have any questions. Thank you. Okay.